everybody, Joey Stanford, NV0N here. I want to talk to you a little bit about network radio today. You may have heard of network radio. It's abbreviated as NR, typically, when you see it online. Uh, and network radio at its core is really radio over IP, radio over internet protocol or radio over the internet. Um, and my question to you is, have we seen this uh, before? And the answer is yes. Uh, things that come to mind, easily come to mind, that you're all familiar with are Echolink and Allstar and the others that are listed here. So it's not necessarily new, or is it? Network radio in this specific sense uh, really means radio over the mobile internet, so 3G, 4G, and LTE, uh, and then using Wi-Fi when you're uh, located somewhere that has Wi-Fi, but predominantly over mobile internet. So this is somewhat of a, a new concept. There's a couple people that say, hey, listen, the network radio is not really amateur radio. There's a couple cases here. There's three of them I want to dig into. Uh, the first one is um, a statement that says, hey, when amateur radio started, we used real RF, none of this mobile internet stuff, uh, not even the internet. Um, and I jokingly call that the Glenn Miller argument because Glenn Miller was popular on the radio then. Um, and, you know, this, in some sense, this, this argument has merit. Uh, but we've kept evolving and tinkering then. Um, you know, we're adept at finding new ways uh, to use radio and to communicate. So I think that is a, negates somewhat this argument. Another argument is, hey, listen, when everything else fails, this will too. Now this, I think, is also a valid point. One just has to think of Haiti when the infrastructure was gone, Puerto Rico recently, 9-11 in the, New York City. Uh, keep in mind, though, with 9-11, the problem there uh, was not necessarily that the infrastructure was destroyed, but that the s existing systems were overloaded, overloaded with voice calls. But network radio uses the network, which uh, so far has not really been put to the test, or has it? The uh, towers, that, you know, if they still, the cell towers, if they still exist after an emergency, um, they typically have about three days of battery life. And uh, network radio, as I said, uses data, not voice. So if you look at Hurricane Katrina, Katrina as an example, uh, there's this wonderful story of the Cajun Navy and the cell phones towers were mostly destroyed, but people could still get signals. Um, they uh, could not uh, talk over the voice uh, to make voice calls very readily because of congestion, but data was still working and they were able to use voice over IP apps, one in particular, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, to uh, organize uh, rescues. The Cajun Navy, by the way, is the uh, nickname for every, everyday average citizens with their own boats who would then go around and rescue people uh, who were stranded be in, in Hurricane Katrina. So my point here is that the network was still operational and useful in most situations. So case three is, hey, listen, it's not amateur radio if you do not need a license to operate. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna say this depends. Can you think of some times when unlicensed users use R, RF frequencies? Sure you can. Get on the air, we do it every field day. Uh, jamboree on the air, scouts on the air, some people call them, and occasionally emergencies. But let's talk about this one a little bit further. Uh, Network Radio has two operating modes, two primary operating modes, the unlicensed and licensed. So unlicensed means, hey, listen, you don't need a license to operate it because you're not uh, transmitting on um, what I'll call restricted frequencies, frequencies that are assigned to amateur radio, for example. And licensed uh, requires a valid, valid um, amateur radio license because it's transmitting over, at some point, real RF, as people like to say. So let's talk about unlicensed. Um, your first thought about unlicensed is, hey, this is going to be CB radio. And some people actually call it you know, CB, but I'm, I'm I'm going to uh, state that I think it's not glorified CB radio uh, because uh, using network radio, we use normal on-air operating practices, including call signs. It works great as a recruiting vector, uh, functions as a wonderful education medium, so you get operating procedures, practice of them. Uh, you get sessions, on-air sessions, about how to pass uh, the radio exam um, for, for in your particular country. Uh, happen to have the, the UK one listed, but it could be any country there. Uh, and the interesting thing is that it exposes everyone to our uh, camaraderie that is unique to being in the amateur radio community. Now for licensed, uh, you know, it's pretty much a single line here, right? You can transmit around the world on real, real RF with some potential cost savings because you don't need to buy potentially fancy equipment. And that's typically enough to get all of the 
uh, license damagers excited. Um, so there are two big supporters. There are many supporters, but there are two main groups. Uh, the first is the Guild, uh, which runs the International Radio Network. Uh, they have well over 20 RF channels worldwide, uh, multi-mode, and they have both unlicensed and licensed operations. So it's friendly to whether you're a licensed amateur or not. And then the Network Radio's Facebook group, uh, which is very active. It has a very large active population. Um, and they have a really good technical support um, for this particular hobby, the network radio hobby. Uh, and they're predominantly unlicensed. The majority of their work is currently with un unlicensed operations. Uh, and they've been gaining a good, good foothold in uh, getting folks to convert from unlicensed to actually taking their amateur radio exam. Uh, so what do you need to get started in this? Well, the good news is if you have a computer, an iPhone, an Android phone, you can get started right now. Uh, if you want to upgrade, you can get uh, what I'll call bona fide network radio hardware. You can get an, an HT uh, or a mobile. The mobiles are kind of neat. They're, uh, they're like half-depth, headless. I call them sort of, uh, or sorry, head only. Uh, it's only a couple inches by a couple inches, uh, and they look good. I have some pictures in a minute I'll show you. And then you have uh, a new emerging trend, which uh, I'm labeling at the moment multi-mold network radio, and this includes DMR Tier 2, UHF, in some cases VHF, network radio, and a phone. And by the way, the network radio hardware runs on Android, so you can use it as a phone as well. Pretty interesting. Here's some examples, uh, and this is sort of the cost um, as of today that you might get into. So if a 4G or some of the new brand newer uh, LTE HTs, you don't need LTE, by the way, because your bandwidth requirement requirements are about um, 150 uh, uh, kilobits, so not that much. Uh, 160 to 220 in the US. Uh, DMR, the works, what I call the works AT, uh, HT here. Somewhere, depending on what you get, 700 to an 850. Um, the 4G LTE HT is the one in the bottom that says Enrico on it. That's a that's a uh, Enrico T320. The DMR, the works, uh, there's a couple of these. There's some wonderful R finders, but the one I listed over here is a box chip. Um, and this is the one that has uh, DMR in it as well. And then there's this uh, 4G, I call head-only mobile, um, and it's uh, just not much bigger than the picture there. They're really cool too. So what software do you need to get started? If you're gonna use your phone as an example to get started, or your computer. Uh, so, uh, if you want to use Echolink, then Echolink. And of course, this is for licensed uh, amateurs only. Zello, which you've heard about undoubtedly, uh, this is unlicensed with some license, uh, and it kind of acts like DMR, and I'll give you a demo about that in a minute. So, there's some really interesting things you can do with Zello. There's the, the Network Radio's Facebook group um, is, is heavily uh, into Zello. The Southern Ireland Repeater Group um, has just popped up. Um, there's uh, other folks that are on here, the 440 Hangout, GB3WP Repeater, and there's a bunch more that are licensed. And then, of course, the International Radio Network uh, that I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can get TeamSpeak, uh, which is exclusively for the IRN at the moment, and that uh, affords both licensed and unlicensed operations. And then if you want to run APRS, uh, APRS Droid is the one that uh, most people are using at this point for APRS beakering. And if you have, a, uh, have some of these uh, hardware models, <coughs> you're going to want to have a button mapper uh, that customizes the buttons on the type of the radio so you can do more with it. Because uh, out of the box, Android doesn't, uh, doesn't quite do the trick. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to want, um, if you do not want to use this solely on Wi-Fi, you're going to want to have some sort of a GSM or LTE data plan that has at least 500 megabits uh, megabytes uh, per minimum usage per month. So there's a couple options here. I've listed Freedom Pop uh, in the United States, which is uh, free, T-Mobile or similar, and they range uh, from $10 to $20 per month. Um, if you're in the UK, EE e pay as you go, Virgin Media, somewhere around six quid a month. Uh, if you're down in Australia, Moose 9, it's about nine, $9 a month. So there's plenty of options uh, for your area. So a couple of good getting started guides here. Um, one is from the Guild, uh, and there's the Guild's website, which is theguildglobal.org. Uh, and yes, I am a member of the Guild, uh, and also a member of the Network Radio's uh, Facebook group. Uh, so there's a group there too, you can go find them. If you have any questions, uh, can't find these, just sh shoot me an email, nv0n at awrl.net, nv0n at awrl.net. So what do you need to know about the future? Well, there is an intense flurry of activity in 
in network radio. Network radio is hot at the moment. Things are changing very rapidly. New systems, channels, and groups are being created weekly. The network radio hardware is quickly advancing and getting even more useful and featureful. And likely by the time you watch this, the presentation will already be out of date. Let me give you a quick demo of DMR versus network radio. Let's make sure my volume's up here. And I recorded this just a few moments ago. This is an audio test for DMR versus network radio. Uh, first is a DMR radio, you know, Motorola radio, using the Brandmeister Parrot. NV0N, testing one, two, three. NV0N, testing one, two, three. Hey, that's pretty good audio. Now let's try it on network radio. NV0N, testing one, two, three. NV0N, testing one, two, three. As you can see, the audio quality is significantly better on network radio, and that's simply because there is more bandwidth available for your voice on network radio. So that about does it. That's a quick demo. If you have any questions, again, oh my goodness, I spelled my call sign wrong. Well, that's all right. NV0N here. Have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you very much. See ya.